Alright guys, here's a few tips for you beginners if you're just starting out in the game and I hope they really help you out. Now normally in most open world games I would encourage you to take on the side missions uh, to level up at first, but not this game. No, stick to these three main missions at the very beginning of your game. The Warrior's Code, because you will be given the Focus Ability, the Tale of Sensei Ishikawa, which grants you the bow, and the Tale of Lady Masako, where you will eventually unlock the Clan Armor, absolutely essential for the combat that you will take on early in the game. Now very early on you're given the ability to perform a standoff. This is when you will face down a group of enemies together and you get to do this at the beginning before the fighting engages. I would encourage you to throw in all your points as much as you can early on into the improved standoff streak. It doesn't give the ability to take on just one, not two, but three enemies in quick succession at the very start of an engagement. Now being able to take out an enemy at the beginning is critical, um, but being able to take out three, if you get lucky, actually three difficult enemies to take out, uh, thins the herd and gives you the upper hand at the beginning of a group fight. But it also gives you the chance to rush in at a fourth enemy who is completely terrified at what he's just witnessed and dissect him with your form of samurai surgery. And the other technique that I insist that you go for very early on is the perfect parry. It's right there at the top of the deflection technique skill tree. It is absolutely a lifesaver in many battles. There is also a charm which you can get which will increase your chances of being able to execute it correctly. This is critical in the boss fights. When you are facing an enemy which is relentlessly hacking and slashing at you and you're finding it really difficult to get through the fight, the perfect parry will save you every time. It does a massive amount of damage and will help you dispatch those bosses a lot more quickly. Now at the various Mongolian camps, castles and forts there will be a leader inside. He can usually be identified because he's practicing his best moves on his own somewhere out of sight so he doesn't embarrass himself in front of his mates. But if you can remain stealthy and undetected, if you can just creep up to him you'll be able to observe him by hitting the R2 button. Observing the leader gives you extra points towards unlocking a new stance but you also get points for killing him afterwards. So basically the leaders are a chance to get double points to unlock new stances a lot more quickly if you observe them before you kill them as well. Which I know sounds a little bit creepy, it kind of turns you into a stalking serial killer type, but hey, look, it works. Throughout the game, you will find plenty of sword kits. Now, I just want to clear some confusion because it took me a while to realize, but these are not independent new swords of their own. They're purely cosmetic items. If you want to upgrade your katana, your sword or your tanto, your dagger, feel free to do so without worrying about picking up another weapon later on and you lose all your upgrades on the previous one because it's a better weapon or something. Quite unlike the armor, the attire or the outfits that you will find across the land of Tsushima. If you find a better suit of armor, of course, you need to start upgrading it all over again with fresh resources. But with your katana and tanto, you can spend your upgrade points here knowing that they will retain throughout the entire game. Now after a bloody battle, some of the enemies that you have slain, you did a good job but they are just not quite dead yet. They are crawling along the ground, pleading with you to end their suffering. But make sure you heal yourself just before doing this. Healing absorbs resolve and ending suffering earns you more resolve. So it's a bit like sucking their life force from them for your own benefit. Okay, next I want to talk to you a little bit more about combat. The main thing I want to convey to you is that the game tries to make you feel guilty for using a more stealthy or less honourable approach. Forget it, okay? These guys are not samurai. Use whatever means you have that are necessary to dispatch your enemies. There is no consequence for doing this the sneaky way. We're going to concentrate first on stealth and immediately first how the detection bars actually work. In most games, as soon as the detection bar meter is filled, that's it, your enemy spotted you and he's tracking you down. Not in Ghost of Tsushima. When the white bar fills up, that means they're curious and they're going to come and start looking for you. But only when the yellow bar fills up and turns red is when they will actually have spotted you. So you can use that time to run into cover, to take one of them out with an arrow, to circle around the other side of the camp if they're starting to look for you in a particular area, take them out from behind. Just so you know, this detection meter has has to be all the way filled with yellow before you are technically spotted. Now this one may seem a little bit obvious but when you're first approaching uh, an enemy camp try to take out the guards that are up in higher positions that will look down upon you as you're sneaking around. Use the bow, 
get the headshot, and then move into the main camp. So with the stealthy approach, once you've taken out all those lookouts, try to find enemies who are on their own and isolated from the rest of the group, or at least won't be seen as you assassinate them. And remember, if they do turn around at the very last minute, you can still assassinate them undetected. You were detected by them, but they're very dead and they can't tell their friends. Now you can do this in any number of ways. You can sneak up behind them and stab them in the neck, or you can take them out with a headshot from the bow. Now the bodies may be seen by some of the other camp mates. Now this can work to your advantage if you're still hidden. They still don't know where you are and it draws them towards you. After they discover the body, they will start moving away from that location and that gives you another chance to take out another enemy. What if there's someone else nearby? Well, I'll also add that assassinations themselves with the Tanto Dagger are actually fairly quiet. But if you upgrade as soon as you can, these assassinations not only become faster, but much more quiet as well. And if you're having trouble finding an enemy on their own, or you want to draw one of them out, pretty early on, you'll unlock the ghost weapon, a wind chime. But with the wind chime, you can actually drop like a breadcrumb trail of these things and lead an individual enemy away from the rest of the camp. Once you've done that, of course, sneak up behind him and show him why it's very dangerous to be on your own out here. So if you want to remain absolutely stealthy and you've picked off all of those outside, outlying enemies that you can, you may well be left with a small group that are tightly packed together, three or four enemies all in one space, and you can't go in there without being seen. So what I recommend you do is actually pick off a couple of them with the bow. The remaining enemies may well detect where that arrow has come from. They're not very good at it, but once they do, they don't worry about it for too long and then they go back to where they started from. You can actually take out an entire small group with the bow from a position of cover and remain unseen throughout the whole thing. And lastly, with regard to stealth, one of the other upgrades I recommend you get are the chain assassinations, allowing you to sneak up behind smaller groups, two or three, if you can max out the assassination technique. This means, of course, you can take out multiple enemies in one assassination. Yes, you will be seen by your second victim or your third victim, but it doesn't matter because they won't have time to raise the alarm. Just make sure you press the triangle button to actually initiate the next takedown in your chain. There are lots of other ways to take out enemies in areas. You can use the environment around them. You can use uh, explosive arrows a bit later. It's, it's not just restricted to the tips I've shown you, but these are the ones I'd recommend that you concentrate on early on in the game. Now we've talked about stealth, let's talk about anti-stealth, or the more aggressive, apparently more honorable way of fighting. Now there's just a quick tip I wanna give you about the standoffs because the only complaint I have about the game is that sometimes the camera angles can hide the next enemy in your chain of standoff takedowns. So make sure you're out somewhere in the open so that you can easily see the enemies coming towards you. Next thing I wanna talk about are the archers. These are probably the most annoying enemy in a group fight. Not only do they obviously cause damage, but they also can interrupt a special move or a move you're about to make. And they stun you and leave you vulnerable. Prioritize taking those out at the beginning of any engagement with a large group of enemies. Now hacking, slashing, and button bashing your way through these fights will get you nowhere apart from very dead very quickly. So make sure you spend some time really learning how to use the dodge, the parry, and the roll when you've unlocked it. Um, it. They will save you so many times in the fights. The perfect parry I mentioned earlier, but of course these, these three or four techniques in any battle are absolutely essential. So make sure you spend some time really studying how to use them effectively. Now we mentioned stances earlier on. I'm not gonna tell you that you need to use them and you need to use them to effectively take on the right enemy. You already know this, the game tells you that, but there are a couple of things I wanted to mention that might make it a bit easier for you. First of all, try to walk backwards away from the fight, which will draw out a particular enemy towards you and then pick the right stance that you wanna use. Then you wanna use their attack against them. So combine the dodge move when they are glowing red with the heavy strike. The heavy strike is the triangle button and that is the one which really is the most effective when using the stances. Now switching stances in the middle of a fight actually slows down time, so you've got a moment or two to gather your thoughts and pick the right stance again for the right enemy. And lastly, I found this tip online somewhere and it's really useful so I want to share it with you. If you're struggling to remember which stance to use and you don't want to have to keep looking at the little mini map of stances in the bottom right corner, just remember the PlayStation buttons. The stance most effective against the spear is the triangle because it looks like a pointy end of a spear. The circle for the shield, the X button looks like the crossed swords, 
and finally the square for the brutes like the big square shoulders of the brute. Now pretty early on in the game you're going to unlock the kunai, the throwing daggers. These are critical at the beginning of the game. Some of the enemies are incredibly tough to take down especially when you're low level. Do not be afraid to get these out, use them as soon as you can. They do an awful lot of damage and sometimes they take out uh, especially an archer in just one throw. You can upgrade how many you carry. Initially, hitting the R1 button to throw kunai throws two at once. If you upgrade, you can throw three at once and it hits multiple enemies at the same time. These saved me so many times early on in my initial engagements at the beginning of the game. Now, if you follow the first few main story missions, you're gonna unlock a few different sets of armor and attire. It's very important to wear the right attire or armor for the right situation. One quick note is that you can change attire at any point. Because you do it with the pause button, the entire game freezes while you very slowly and carefully select exactly what you want to use. In the early unlocks, and I'm not gonna show you too many different suits of armor, choose the samurai clan armor for combat, Tadayori's armor for archery, the ronin attire for stealth, and the traveler's attire when you are searching around the map for items and collectibles. Now this is really effective to give you the upper hand. It's not critical though. You can still go into a battle wearing your stealth armor. It's not to say you can't do these things in the wrong armor. It just gives you the edge. Now here's something that took me a little while to work out, which is why I'm sharing it with you. By now, you'll know how to use the Guiding Wind, but come here to the Exploration section. You can select a particular item you want to find, in this case, Bamboo Strikes. They give you Resolve, I want more of it. So open up the map and then hit the right button on the D-pad. You can actually assign one of these items that you want to track to the Guiding Wind. It doesn't have to be a mission that you select or a location that you may have discovered. Now some items can be found using the Guiding Wind at the beginning of the game, you don't have to unlock anything. The banners, artifacts, records, singing crickets and the flowers. But the special items, for example charms or the resolve, if you want to find more of those, you're going to have to unlock them as a technique in your menu. This will actually allow you to level up really, really quickly. Very quick one, uh, once you discover the Golden Temple, make sure you keep going back to check if you've got any gifts available there. These gifts are occasionally granted to you as you play through the game, and it's fairly easy to forget you've got them. Go back because they have very generous bundles of supplies left for you at the temple. This is a game where exploration is key, so turn yourself into Marco Polo and get out there and check this world out. You will not regret it, but the main reason you won't regret it is because there are plenty of things for you to find and you're going to have to do this in order to find all the supplies and items and collectibles and objects that you're going to need to upgrade all your stuff. Firstly, have a good rummage around every village, every encampment, every location that you find for supplies and other items. But also importantly, when you return to the same places sometime later, have a check again because there will be fresh supplies available to you when you return and have another look. Now, if farming is your thing, it's not something I like to do in these games, but I will, I will let you know it's possible. The Traveler's Rest Inn is a location that you will find fairly early in the game. One of the great things about the Traveler's Rest Inn is it is one of the locations that has a chest. Now, this works for a lot of the other locations that you find chests in as well. What you can do is travel to the Traveler's Rest Inn, Fast travel to it and head straight towards the main building in front of the bridge. Go through this door and you will find a chest. Open the chest, fast travel back away from the inn, fast travel back to it and you can rinse and repeat. And you'll get slightly different items each time but it's a pretty quick way if you're short on supplies and you want to get an urgent upgrade. I wouldn't honestly recommend you do this over and over again. It's a little bit game breaking for me but I thought I'd throw it in here as a possible tip to get you out of a sticky situation. Don't forget to check every single dead body that you dispatch because they will also be holding items and you're going to need them to refuel whether it's supplies or whether it's items like daggers, arrows, etc. Just check everything and everywhere as much as you can. I have to point out there is no carry weight limitation in the game. So load up Jin Sak High. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that. Now there are so many charms available to you in the game and you will find your own favourites but at the very beginning of the game I would recommend you head to this location and find this one. Follow the arches, squeeze through the gaps, jump over the ledges, crawl under the holes, through the tunnels, just keep going and eventually you will come to the shrine at the very end for your well-earned reward. This is quite a long one but it is an excellent charm. 
It's called The Charm of Ukinushi and it gives you slow recover health while you're out of combat. That saves you resolve points and it is the best charm you can get at the beginning of the game. One thing I should really mention, when you're taking on any of the enemy camps, any of the Mongol territories, pay attention to the bonus objectives. In this case, I've got to take out enemies with three headshots. Now, the reason why you want to do this and make sure you do pick them up as often as you can, they're not that difficult to do. Well, most of them aren't that difficult to do, but it will give you additional experience points. Basically, your legend will increase even further if you pick up every bonus objective in the game. It's just a faster way of leveling up your character. Now, you may have correctly been looting and scavenging your way through this game very successfully and that is good but if you're after an upgrade and you just don't have enough supplies there is a way to sell your items some of your items in order to gain more supplies all you need to do is look on the map carefully at some of the camps or the villages that you may have come across already and there will be someone called a trapper there they will allow you the option to sell something you've already collected a vast number of them for additional supplies so that you can get that item you've been looking for much more quickly than having to go back out there and gather more supplies for yourself. Now to upgrade the number of items you carry like bombs and arrows etc you need to go to a trapper and you need to have collected enough predator skins enabled to do this. It took me a while to work out though that you cannot get this from the deer. There are multiple deer around the game. No, you kill them you get nothing. The only animals you can get these skins from are bears, boars and the fluffy little dogs that you occasionally find in the camps. End them, make them suffer, so that you can get more items to carry in your bag. If you didn't know, you could perform a slide, which is by sprinting with L3 and then hitting the circle button just to slide while standing. But you can also slide into cover, into a crouched position, by hitting the R3 button instead. Now I didn't realise this at first, but your flute is not just for show or for a performance, it will actually change the weather. If you prefer your climbs to be sunny or a starry night sky, if it is cloudy or thundery, get out your flute, play your little tune, and it will clear the skies for you. Later on, after you've collected some of the singing crickets around the map, you'll be able to change the tune and also change the weather to suit your needs. And finally, just a quick word about the birds, okay? Let's talk about the birds and the bees. No, just the birds. The birds and the foxes you know you've got to follow. And the birds in most places around the map will lead you to items. Oh, and by the way, they will lead you to locations and items that will not necessarily ever be revealed on your map. So you should follow the bird whenever you get the chance to do it. But when you come back to some of the camps, the, the bird will start tweeting. He's actually trying to show you something that's in it. Now you need to have unlocked the grappling hook, of course. That comes a few hours into the game. But the grappling hook will allow you to actually climb up some of the buildings which you couldn't normally have reached. And there will be hidden items at the top of some of these buildings. In most cases, these are extra cosmetic items, but I think they're well worth finding because they're considered the secret items of the game okay lastly this is just a general tip okay nothing you do will be time wasted whether it's doing side quests exploring the world anything you do off the beaten track whether you engage with mongol groups follow a bird pick a flower rescue a villager anything you do will allow you to increase your xp Everything you do is not wasted, so just please explore this beautiful world. I'm, I'm so impressed with Sucker Punch. This game is absolutely amazing, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Just go out there, have fun. That's the, that's the last tip. Just make sure you have fun, but also stop and look around and have a look at this beautiful, beautiful world. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you made it all the way to the end. If you did, hit the like button. But most importantly, I want to hear about your tips in the comments down below. Remember, this video was a tips video for beginners. Some of you that have been playing this game for some time already will already know an awful lot of this. There may be one or two things in here you didn't know, and that's cool. But share your tips down below. Thank you once again for watching. Please take care, all the very best, and good night.